Hey everyone, I'm Richard with some suggestions you might like to consider if you're looking for a gamepad for your PC. Now, pretty much every game has support in some way, shape or form for the traditional mouse and keyboard, but some games, and we'll stress not all of them, simply play better with a joypad. So let's kick off with what some might consider to be a rather odd choice. Sony's DualShock 4 for PlayStation 4 is actually a highly regarded PC controller too. But here's the funny thing, there are no actual official drivers for it that allow it to run with Xbox compatible controllers. Instead, you need to use third party software called Input Mapper to get it to work. So what do I like about the DualShock 4? Well, aside from its iconic design, excellent face buttons, great triggers and precision analog sticks, it's highly practical as well. You can hook it up to your PC via a micro USB socket, but it's also Bluetooth compatible too, meaning you don't need to buy proprietary receiver dongles. You may even have a Bluetooth receiver already built into your motherboard. I also like the rechargeable battery too. Now the stamina there may not be particularly great, but it's an option that's not really available with much of the competition, and pricing wise it's very competitive too. Now there's just one problem. While playing Street Fighter V I noticed that latency, input lag if you like, seemed a bit high. I used a high speed camera to compare with a wired Xbox 360 controller and calculated an additional 40 milliseconds of lag on button presses. And that's not great. Speaking of which, the Xbox 360 controller itself is compatible with PC in both wired and wireless versions. The wired version is my preferred PC controller actually. The wireless version works just as well, but having to replace the batteries becomes a bit of a pain and I'm tight enough not to want to buy a play and charge kit. I'd say that the Xbox controller is a must for PC gamers for a number of reasons, not least that it seems to be the pad of choice for developers based on my studio visits. If this is what's being used by the creators themselves as they develop the games, you can be reasonably sure of a decent experience at home as well. But of course, the Xbox 360 controller has been replaced with an Xbox One replacement. Now, in theory, it should automatically be better, and many gamers obviously believe that it is. It's certainly a highly accomplished pad that does the job, but I'll be honest, for me it doesn't quite have the same purity as the original Xbox 360 pad. For a start, it requires AA batteries just like its predecessor, and it requires a proprietary receiver dongle for wireless support, again just like the 360 pad. But what's more, the product is compromised by politics. For some reason only Microsoft knows the dongle only works on Windows 10. Now, you can use it as a wired pad using a micro USB connection, but this pad here, my personal Xbox One pad, well, actually it drops the connection all the time when I'm tethered via USB. Basically, the micro USB port has worn away through use. It's just not a very durable interface. This is not good, and of course, Microsoft doesn't make a purely wired version of this pad. So overall, for me, this is a good controller, but it's not perfect. But this, well, this is the Microsoft Xbox One Elite controller. It costs a small fortune, but you should think of this along the lines of all those pricey mechanical keyboards and gaming mice out there. You pay extra, but you get quality. Build quality across the board is on another level. Plastic sticks and pads are replaced by quality metallic parts. The rubberized surface on the underside gives enhanced grip. The curved edges make it easier to hold and easily replaceable magnetic sticks are available to better tailor the gameplay experience to your needs. Rear mounted paddles are also available and they can be remapped for functions like reloading in a shooter, or changing gear in a driving game. Also useful is the hair trigger option, great for first person shooters. There's even an Xbox app for the PC that allows you to adjust sensitivity on a more granular level. It won't turn you into an eSports champ, but it can make a difference in tailoring the experience to your specific needs. Put simply, this is an absolutely brilliant controller, possibly the very best you could use on your PC. I just wish that it didn't need a proprietary dongle that only works for Windows 10 for wireless functionality, but more than that, I really wish that a proper wired version was available. Yup, you can use a micro USB connection here, but since my standard Xbox One pad doesn't work properly anymore there, I do fear the same for this one after prolonged use. Now, an interesting alternative here is the Razer Wildcat, and that is a fully dedicated wired controller 
for Xbox One and PC. Just like the Elite, it costs a small fortune, but it controls really well. I particularly like the face buttons, which are arguably better than the Elite's. It's also a really, really light pad compared to Microsoft's Champ about on par with the Xbox One standard controller. It also has its own customizable bumpers, but we weren't really so keen on those, they're quite difficult to access. Build materials don't feel quite as good as the Elite either, and the D-pad is a bit of a disappointment. But one plus point that it does have compared to the Elite is its built-in audio control facilities. You'll need to buy an add-on for the Elite, yup, another dongle, to do the same thing. Next up, one for the purists. Valve's Steam controller gets a lot of love from the community, based on the fact that it's a fully configurable pad and it's open to the community for customization. And of course, it's able to drive keyboard and mouse games thanks to its right pad here, which features some superb haptic feedback. I'm probably going to get a lot of complaints for this and possibly some death threats, but the Steam controller is one of those pieces of technology that I just want to admire but can't really recommend. Like the original Xbox controller, it seems a bit too large and there seems to be a lack of consistency in how the trackpads operate between one game and the next. The thing that I dislike about it the most are the tiny face buttons and their placement. Maybe it's because I've got small hands, but I feel as though I'm having to lunge across the controller to get to the X button. It's just not particularly comfortable. Also, this is a controller designed primarily for Steam. For games you have on Origin, GOG and Uplay. Yeah, yeah, I know. You have to jump through hoops to get the controller to work. Meanwhile, my trusty Xbox 360 pad just works on virtually any game I throw at it, just by plugging it in. Now, I persevered with it for around a week before realising that while the Steam controller is undoubtedly loved by many, it's just not for me. So, finally, Let's end with something a little left field. I was looking at Amazon to see if there's a cheap Chinese pad out there that offers a decent experience at a low, low price. I found this, the Zidong V Plus wired controller. It's a mildly disguised DualShock 3 clone that offers X input functionality just like the standard Xbox 360 pad. It costs just £15 or $20 and it has a 4.5 star rating on Amazon. So people really seem to love it. Well, it's up against some pretty stiff competition here, but remarkably, in many ways, it does hold up. The face buttons are fine, and well, the D-pad, well, that's pretty amazing, actually. For fighting games, it's a revelation. The analog sticks, they aren't quite so wonderful, though. They are perfectly serviceable, but it does feel like there's quite a dead zone to them. The worst part of the package is undoubtedly the clicky shoulder buttons, though. Again, they work, but they just don't feel good. And in fact, I'm not even sure that they have analog functionality. But hey, you can buy eight of these for the cost of one Elite controller. If you need a cheapo pad for the kids or just a reserve pad for multiplayer and gaming sessions, well, you could do a lot worse. So that's where we're at for now in terms of PC joypads. I've tested a big bunch of them, but for me, it's still the wired Xbox 360 controller here that is the champion. Though that Elite, it's very, very tempting. But I'm always keen on testing out new controllers. Do you reckon that I've missed any out worthy of coverage? If so, let us know in the comments, but for now, do please like, subscribe, and indeed share to support our work. That's all we have right now. I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching.